Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, really, but you have a PDF. You yeah. have it. Oh, then maybe we can put it on my computer. Oh, okay. Oh, it's working. Yeah. Wait. I just. Uh, it's. Uh, <coughs> I think. Oh. Okay. It should be hang here. This position. Duplica. Right. So let's go. Hi everybody, uh, we are a group of Italian designers from Politecnico di Torino. Uh, we'd like to show our project, Blender for School, uh, which arose from a specific point during the last two Blender conferences keynotes that are uh, Make a Blender 101 for kids training. So we developed uh, an open software for children's educations, education. Um, a first analysis towards educational software shows that the big majority of these are focused on a single subject. Otherwise, thanks to Blender's tool and functions, we had the capacity to develop a software characterized by multidisciplinarity, creativity, and openness mind. Uh, we believe that Blender has a great potential for its different features such as modeling, simulating, exploring, setting in time, counting, and so on. And we have decided to translate them into a new interpretation useful and advantageous for the primary school, identifying six different thematic areas that are representation, principle of physics, space, time, environment, and numbers. Uh, starting from this element, we developed our con uh, project concept that is uh, uh, divided in uh, three uh, principal steps. The first is the creation, where the child, the, the child can create uh, the element that he, uh, will uh, uh, be the, the subject of his work. In the second step, the adaptation uh, go th goes uh, through the six areas of interest and uh, the making of uh, the video. And the third one is the sharing uh, with, uh, uh, that uh, is uh, a step with uh, openness and, co and comparison. Now we show you a short movie that uh, tells uh, the function of this software. Starting with login, you can choose the element from the library or create it with a simple geometry element that you can scale, rotate, bring on front and back. To the creation, you can give the object a name, for example, Dodo, and a category animal. Then you can share it. In this moment, you are uh, ready to uh, start your uh, project through the area of interest, for example, from uh, space, when you can translate your object in 3D with the extrusion and uh, 3D simple shape, for example, a sphere. Then you can pass to the other uh, area, for example numbers, when you can count the element. Representation with texture and colors. Principle of physics, when you can compare some element. Environment. And time, for example using the season. When you finish your, uh, um, your trip around the six area of interest, you can create uh, the final video.
So if you like our project, you can contact us on Facebook and or in, your, in your email. And uh, I hope you like it. Thank you. Thanks. Ciao. Please, can you still wait a little bit? No, we cannot wait. So I'm doing uh, John Baptiste. Yeah. No, but you ready or not? No, you're not. No. Come on. You should be ready before. You have a video? Okay, while well, they're still connecting the, the uh, laptop, we took the liberty of improving on the Cycles Wikipedia, or Wiki, Cycles Wiki. And you, if you've ever had trouble with a node or something, you probably went online and checked it on the Cycles Wiki. And a lot of the time, there will be something like uh, the is shadow ray node will be true if the ray is a shadow ray. So after the third time that happened to me, I thought, no, we got to do this a little better. So I decided to actually write a book and try to write it in plain English so normal people would understand it. And I mean, there are some math stuff there that's just, I don't know. I, I've, I have studied a science, so I'm not that much of a stranger to math, but still, sometimes I just had to give up. So I tried to translate all that stuff into a normal and regular English. And it started out as just the um, nodes. So the original goal was just to describe the nodes. And so, of course, I have a chapter for each category. And it came up to about 77, no, actually, exactly 77 nodes. And then I started to talk a little bit more to my friend about it. And he said, why not include some other stuff? So instead of the um, original about 80 pages of the notes, we now included also some basic camera settings. We're comparing the Cycles camera to real world cameras. We're comparing how the depth of field works and telling you about those uh, style elements that not necessarily everybody knows. And I included all the settings of the camera tab, which turned out to be quite a lot. So the next thing I put in there was a render performance, meaning we got tips on how to improve performance, we got tips on how to deal with the noise, how to get rid of the noise, and all that kind of stuff, branch path, path tracing versus regular path tracing, and so on. Next thing I had was some miscellaneous settings. Those are just object settings, like multiple importance per object, and all that kind of stuff that you, some of you just might have heard about, but you're not really sure what it does, so you just leave it by default. Or so uh, you can, if you're interested what it actually does, you can go ahead and check that out in the book. In the end, I even included a small chapter about how to use nodes with, uh, with Python, meaning a few tips on how to address and link nodes using Python scripts or just single command lines. Well, now for a short demonstration of how uh, we thought people could um, learn cycles really fast and understand um, everything about cycles in depth. We did not only create um, a textual representation of um, what's happening when you're working in Node. But uh, we also included a lot of images to tell you how things are working out. For example, here is um, an example for volume scatter. And um, you see that um, normally when you're using volume scatter, then the ray will enter the volume and bounce into a random direction. But for example, if you set the anisotropy to a positive value, then the rays will bounce in the direction that the rays enter the volume, or 
if you set it to a negative direction, the rays will bounce back, more or less. And, um, okay, that's um, one part. We have a textual representation. We uh, write in plain English what actually each setting of a node does. Then usually we also include um, drawings that show you how things are working internally. And for last but not least, we have created an intense amount of preview renders. So if you want to know what a node is doing, you can always go and check out the preview renders so you don't have to work on the settings yourself for a, a long time. For example, these preview renders, they were all um, 25 in this case and all rendered with 1,500 samples. So if you want to do this yourself, you might uh, have to wait a little bit. And here, for example, is also the preview render for the more anisotropic effect in cycles. It basically has a red lamp behind the object and a blue lamp before the object. And you see if you set the anisotropy to a negative value, then it will scatter back, even like the material is diffuse. Or if you set it to a very high positive value, then it sh the rays will more or less just go through and only scatter a little bit. So this is uh, basically how we designed each chapter. And I see if you want to go for on one, right? Okay, and um, yeah, we just we are still working on this, it's, but we have a special offer for all those of you who are attending the conference. Basically, um, you can get the book now cheaply and we will add a lot more stuff later on because this is not finished yet. It's a work in progress. Just check out Blender Diplom. We, got, we created a shop page that is so ugly that we are sure only you will get there and um, buy the book. <laughs> so this is a secret just for you, for the Blender Conference people. Thank you. <laughs> start talking okay <laughs> so uh, I am currently working for the project the open source project super tuxcart it's basically a racing arcade game very similar to Mario Kart we are open source and the tractor are from open source mascot okay and um, many complaints were about the quality of the graphic of the game. So we changed the rendering engine and now we have our own engine. And I will show you some screenshot and then a quick video. So. Okay, so here you have a preview of the new generation engine. Everything is dynamic, there is no baking, all shadows and likes are computed just on time when you render the image. Basically, it's done on Blender. Blender is used as a game editor and all assets are managed in Blender. Then we export in the, our custom format and you can see here the result. The, Light of the sky and the environment will affect the player and the object in the scene. So you can see here the quality is vastly improved. Here is an example with some waterfall and particle on GPU. And you can see. Also, like the reality, we have an example with a motorbike and the idea was to be as close as possible to the physics. 
So if you put the specularity to the max value, you will obtain a mirror that will reflect the environment. So here is some other screenshot. Okay. And now I have a video. Okay, so this is just a lap, and this is in real time on a, let's say, good computer. Uh, it's shown at 60 frames per second. And as you can see, everything is dynamic. There is no uh, lag or problem with that. And you can see the, the video here. You can play with Suzanne. So if anybody is interested, I have the game in my computer, and you can check it out. <laughs> OK. So that's the list of the people uh, coming up. So if every time you see your name and you think you will be next, if you can already come down, that's fine. So next we have Baptiste Guesquiere. Guesquiere, welcome. Does this count? <laughs> the, the, the 14 seconds, does this count until I get that there? Yeah. 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 yeah, And it's QWERTY. Yeah. No. As you can see, I don't use Mac and QWERTY. So I'm just going to start my talk while I struggle with uh, live logging into Facebook. OK. Um, I hope nobody saw my. OK. Is this me? No, this is not me. Yeah, this is me. OK. Uh, I'm just going to show you something I, uh, I am working on. It's, uh, I am active in Coder Dojo Belgium. And uh, Coder Dojo, maybe some of you already know the initiative. It's a, um, this is maximizing? OK, cool. Um, Coder Dojo is a initiative started in Ireland to uh, get kids, to get kids uh, on coding. Um, we use a Scratch uh, from the MIT. And um, uh, it's, the, uh, it's a very huge success. In Belgium, we have 25 locations where every, uh, in the weekend, one weekend a month, uh, people come, the kids come from 7 till 18, and they come coding. They use Scratch. It's block-based programming. It's, uh, very, uh, it's very nice. It's a free initiative, and there's pizza um, at 1230. But also, we have uh, we give kids the op how do I scroll? Um, uh, to, it's like okay, modern. oh, it's very modern. Wow, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, there's pizza, and um, it's block-based programming. And uh, what I would just want to show you is uh, I do Blender for the mo uh, the, the 15 years old because uh, Scratch is a little kitten that you can make it turn and go left right in 3d world when you're 15 year old you want to shoot everything up so um and how do i approach this um i am pro i'm not pro or against something i just use something that fits my needs and blender fits my needs it's free it's good developed i can do whatever i want and what i teach these kids is uh, I don't teach them press there and press there and press here. I teach them uh, what is a 3D model, uh, what is a texture, how do you get uh, textures on your model and stuff like that. I teach them the basics. 
Uh, I always say, uh, don't teach people how to, how to work with words. Teach them how to work with a word processor. Don't teach people how to work with Excel. Teach people how to work with spreadsheets. Um, so uh, if, you're, uh, if you're interested in, uh, in Coder Dojo, or if you want to be involved in some kind of educational program, this is a really cool initiative. Uh, we're taking this to the European level. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a Coder Dojo session on the European Parliament, uh, where we actually had uh, uh, European Parliament ministers uh, getting uh, lessons from the kids from Coder Dojo, uh, teaching them how to code. And uh, uh, it was very, it was very cool. There's a, there's a, uh, we also have Le uh, Lego Mindstorms, as you can see the, the robots. Uh, we have Makey Makey Arduino. So we're, we're actually uh, getting these kids into the IT. Um, for myself, uh, my name is Baptiste. I, uh, I, I'm a bit of an artist. I'm more of a teacher. I sculpt. I draw. I do stuff. Uh, if you want to talk to me, I'm at the dinner. Uh, I talk like four different languages. It's like Dutch, English, uh, French, gibberish. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I was fluent in binary, but that was years ago. Um, so thanks you for, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you have a great time. And if you want to talk about education. <laughs> we're on time. Did you log out? Uh, no, 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 no. no? Okay. I'm going to check your mail after. Uh, okay, so while Jan is setting up, uh, I'm going to give a little bit of a background. Uh, my name is Julius Tomsto. Uh, my colleague is Janne, Janne Karhu. Uh, we come from Finland. Uh, long time uh, Blender aficionados. Um, we have a company called Telecode. Uh, we uh, make a software called Enimate, which is a motion capture tool, uh, which also has uh, some plug, uh, like an add-on for, for Blender. And uh, yeah, uh, this this year um, we've been focused on on kind of extending the support for different sensors. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have the Kinect 2 with us now, but we do have the, the Leap. Uh, the leap motion, so, so we're going to showcase something with the leap motion. Uh, kind of giving you an overview of, of what would be possible with, with the leap. Let's see if the screen comes up. Yes. Okay, so, um, so I'm, without further ado, I'm going to give uh, the floor to Janne. Janne is going to just show you a little bit uh, uh, of the type of motion tracking that, or motion uh, capture that you can do in, in Blender in real time with the leap. Yeah, hello, I'm Jan de Karho. Uh, some of you might know me from uh, the Blender Particle System, uh, which I did some, I don't know, six years ago. Since, I, since I've been working with Julius, I haven't had any time for actual Blender de development, but, but the plugins for Animate is, is pretty nice too. So we actually have the uh, custom version of Enamit this is uh, not yet released, but it's coming out hopefully soon, which uh, actually uses the leap motion device, which I have here connected. So what you basically can do is just uh, start the Enamit plugin and then start moving your hand. And then, uh, But uh, these are just the just the empties that you get from uh, Enamate. Then you can uh, uh, basically with the, with basic constraints you can uh, let's see where's my mouse there. You can basically get it to an armature, and from there it's not a big leap to actually use it in a rig or to rig a hand. And the new tracking for the in the Leap SDK, it's, it's pretty nice. So it, uh, the pre previous one just basically 
This is all you could do. But now, now it actually tracks pretty nicely, even if you turn your hand. So maybe maybe just a, a quick takeover from Jan. Then uh, Andy was actually uh, asking us for for one additional feature. Oh, oh, wait, wait, okay. Wait a okay. Oh, 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 there's, there's no <laughs> <laughs> Jan cut himself. <laughs> okay. So so Andy asked uh, asked us for for something uh, whether you could kind of take OC and whether. Because the, the, the protocol that we're using is OSC, it's open sound control. Uh, it's an open protocol, and, and then Andy was asking if we could kind of uh, use that to manipulate whatever uh, in Blender, and it's actually, it's actually possible, and Jan, Jan just today uh, did, did a quick hack that enables this. Yeah, let's see this. Uh, I'm hoping to avoid any other, other accidents with this, but let's see if we can actually actually get this to work. So basically this this uh, it's just uh, just an empty as well but it, it could be any object I just chose it because it was there. So it's uh, named right palm and uh, uh, let's see if we can actually uh, where is it there if we can actually get the Python path for for example the scale or the Z value. So it's Reading right there, bpy .data objects uh, and right palm and the scale. And now, if we disable the actual skeleton tracking and go to the OSC controller tab, now I input that that Python path into here. And uh, oh, it's not the z value; it's the x value since it's zero. Now, if we Enable the OSC controller, and it's uh, for the distance between two, two hands now. Then, if everything goes well, you should actually be controlling the. Let's see, the mic is on the. It's on the way. You can actually control any value in Blender. <laughs> Yeah, th thanks. So, so uh, we haven't released this yet, but it's going to come out in one or two months. Thanks. Uh, can I just ask for two people, Damon Lauren Baker and Jakub Batog, to come to me because I didn't get you and I don't know what you're presenting? If you are here, of course. Uh, and next one is Daniel. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. <laughs> and you have your step here. Right? This is the time. Huh? Yeah, it's the time. And it's fine. Um, you said start. Okay, it's going to be hard to come after such awesome presentations, but uh, I'll try. Hi, mom. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, yeah, I, but if it takes too long, then, okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. Uh, do I press play or? Wow. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about something a bit less fancy. Uh, uh, pupillary light reflex visualization with Blender. Well, now I say it, it sounds fancy, but. Okay, so everybody has eyes, right? Well, almost everybody. Uh, so I'm, um, for school, I was asked to model uh, the light reflex when you shine light into, into your eye. Uh, but first, a bit about me. So I'm a student of technical medicine in Enschede. Enschede is here. It's really long for Dutch people to drive, uh, go by trains, two and a half hours, I know. It's really long. I've been a Blender super fan for about 10 years. Still a bit crap at Blender. And I'm from the Elysian generation. Uh, show of hands, who is Elysian? Awesome, cool. <laughs> so uh, the assignment that we got for school is simulate the effect of ocular motor nerve palsy on the anisocory of the pupillary light reflex. <laughs> or when you hit your head really hard, will that mess up your eyes? 
So this is the reality that we're trying to model. Uh, you see a lot of uh, efferent and afferent neurons. Basically, the neurons that go to your eye that control your uh, muscles, we're trying to model. So this is a model in Simulink. Uh, it's, uh, it looks a bit more complicated than it is. Unfortunately, this is not yet possible in Blender. So, um, but fingers crossed. Math is fun, yay. So this is a differential equation that we modeled in Simulink. And basically, we uh, ran the simulation, and we got the uh, left, uh, left upper corner. This is the pupil radius. And this I basically just exported into a CSV file and very uglily pasted into Python. So uh, let's go to Blender if I can manage. Oh, shit. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay, so apologies for the very ugly interface layout. I don't know what happened. So uh, this is my eye. Uh, this is my Python file. Um, oh, control. Oh, damn it. So basically, this is the uh, this is the data that I imported. Just to paste it into it, and I uh, scaled the data. I adjusted the time scale to the simulation, and I control. Uh, uh, two empties with the data. Uh, is it control up to uh, go full screen? Hmm. Shift space. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so these are the eyes, and basically, um, oh, the Z is somewhere else. Um, this empty uh, controls the other empty, which controls the scaling of the pupil. Okay, that was all I wanted to show in Bender. Uh, <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Um, I have the image of the eye. Okay. So this is the final result. Uh, as you can see, the simulation is a bit too strong. It, it goes way too uh, wide. But uh, so this is the result. And uh, what's cool about this is that we can adjust the damping to make it look realistic. So basically, we use the a capability of humans to see what's realistic to adjust the damping. It's not very scientific, but it works. <laughs> so um, I guess my, um, let me go to the slides one more time and then I'm done. Which one is it? <laughs> this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so other uses would be augmented reality uh, of surgical operations of veterinary medicine and also training simulations of, for instance, laparoscopic uh, uh, simulations. And these things I'm very interested in and want to explore in the future. So uh, thank you very much. So basically, so if you're a noob like me, don't be afraid of Python. It's your friend. Next one is Fabrizio, but I mean, after. And I have uh, at, uh, the cable, it's faster. Sorry. <laughs> it's supposed to be faster when it. Okay, we'll get to this in a minute. So I'm Richard Colburn, and uh, I've been a Blender professional for about seven years and made my income exclusively using Blender for about five years. And uh, so thank you, Blender. Um, and I've actually done a whole lot of things that Blender was probably never really intended to be used for, um, from aerodynamic simulation on rocket-powered motorcycles, uh, bridge demolition simulations, artificial intelligence, visual displays, and I've used just about every feature that Blender has for one thing or another. Um, I'm with uh, Gerber Scientific, 
And uh, Gerber Scientific is a global leader in textile manufacturing. So they have clients like Abercrombie and Fitch and um, Under Armour and Disney. So they make the machines that are used to manufacture the costumes that they have for the theme parks and things like that. Uh, I wasn't really planning on speaking, so I'm not exactly prepared. But um, Tan suggested that I share with you what our company is doing because it's relevant to Blender development. So right, right here you can see um, there's a, the avatar and you see the garment that is near the avatar that is just about ready to be run by the cloth simulator. Um, Gerber has an AccuMark software, which is a 2D CAD software that drives their great big CNC machines that cut fabric. And uh, the software is also for designing garments. And currently, we've implemented a button in the AccuMark software. When you hit that button, it just says 3D on it. It launches Blender, and it loads the avatar with the animation files. It loads the garment positioned around the avatar. And then it actually starts this animation, which sews the garment onto the avatar. So that was all basically one button press in our software to make all of that stuff happen. Um, when they asked me to design a rig for this avatar that they wanted to use, they said it needs to be able to follow motion capture. It needs to be able to pose, be posed manually and animated manually, and it needs to give 100% realistic muscle and skin and body deformation in extreme poses. So arms all the way over the head, and bent all the way down, or squatting, or whatever. It also needs to be versatile, so we want to be able to hit a single button and put a new avatar on the rig. So all of those things had to apply to this rig. And I said, hey, no problem, it's Blender, you can do anything. <laughs> so there's you know, about 350 plus bones in this rig, and it actually does all those things. So there are zero weight paint corrections in this rig. So <clears throat> I'm using the, the CMU library that is an add-on in Blender, and I just dropped in a marker cloud and I have my rig following it. So here you see that was just a viewport render and then just for the fun of it I did a cycles render and um, our ultimate goal is to be able to include all of the materials to make everything look amazing in the viewport and then also have a, um, a mode where we can run it and render it in cycles. So basically what happened is that Gerber decided the best way to develop their own 3D software to go with their 2D software was to use Blender. So I think they're geniuses. That's why they hired me, <coughs> because I knew Blender, not because they're geniuses. Uh, so ultimately, we're going to be able to use the Blender interface for clothing design and then send that data back to AccuMark and actually drive these machines. Um, we're beating the cloth simulator into submission to try to make it do some really weird things that it's not really made to do, like lapels and collars and you know belts and shoes and things like that. And uh, we've already made some patches to Blender. We're running our own custom builds, so we have multi-threaded cloth, which runs the cloth simulator two to three times faster than it normally runs. And um, my boss would probably kill me for saying this, but we're actually looking seriously into um, overhauling Blender's cloth simulator uh, to make it CUDA enabled and also support for AMD cards um, so that it will run basically in real time. We're also hoping to add a bunch of tools to it. So we may start with a standalone physics engine and a cloth cache, uh, but that's going to be impractical for a lot of things. So. Probably Blender's cloth simulator is going to get an overhaul.
Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Fabrizio Valpreda. I am an uh, assistant professor in uh, Politecnico di Torino. That is a very big university in uh, Italy, northern, west, north part of Italy. And uh, I am a designer. I was an architect. And in Politecnico di, di Torino, we are surrounded uh, with uh, many engineers, especially information technology engineers. Um, and uh, this is very good news because uh, they are actually protecting us designer and architects uh, from uh, the very dangerous uh, world around. We are, they are very precious. So if uh, there is any engineer here, be happy to be an engineer. So um, we are working with them uh, to organize, I'm in the organizing committee of a conference, an international conference, the 2050 um, edition of Entertain, which is a conference that will be um, held in Turin, almost there, in that castle, that is um, one of the places we work, we work in. And uh, this uh, um, conference uh, is uh, the topic of the conference will be interaction design for entertainment. Um, we can imagine this topic very enlarged, very more large than the picture, these two pictures are suggesting us. So feel free to uh, imagine anything that is, uh, will be related to interaction design for entertainment. We work uh, a lot with Arduino that is very close to us, for example. And, but what I would like, I would like to introduce in that conference is, uh, um, the open source perspective within the interaction design for entertainment because uh, I, um, I, I am very good with open source perspective from the design and the process system point of view. So uh, the question I'm, uh, I'm uh, saying you is uh, if you accidentally know something about an active and very good open source community around here full of smart creative people involved in such kind of stuff hopefully, hopefully interested in submitting papers or leading workshops paid please do not hesitate to contact me we are very interested to inject open source approach in uh, um, otherwise that may be boring conference. Thank you very much. Can I just ask uh, Jason von Gumster to come uh, down just now? You can be next because you don't talk and we change computers. Uh, Hi. Uh, this is a comment. Uh, I hear a lot here, uh, a lot in this conference and uh, in better environments, uh, the word open source, and I just want to make a comment. If you say open source, uh, you mean open source, but also free license, or just open source? Just think about it. Just read about uh, that in the Free Software Foundation. And I just recommend to use free software because most of the time you say open source, you mean free software. Thanks. And now, something totally different. Um, I will just present a small prototype for a game that I'm working on with a friend. Um, yes. If I touch a Mac, I will break it, so, yeah. Okay, so it's a text and term in the Blender game engine. Um, the setup is you are a scientist uh, in the moon Europa, the Jupiter's moon, and you are in a facility, in a laboratory, in the surface of Europa, in the ice moon. Um, your uh, two colleagues are lost, and then you have to control a rover in the surface to find them. The basic um, mechanics, the way you interact with the game, is via text commands, and this is a cool part. You, have a, you would have a file system working with files that you can save, you can edit text, you can take pictures, and so on. And you control the rover via these commands too, which also adds some fun. It's a horror game, uh, the story is based, or it's an adaptation of Lovecraft's um, At the Mountains of Madness book. Uh, so it talks about Cthulhu means, and um, it's a tragedy, actually, and so on. Uh, here you can see just the basic um, console, which was painfully and poorly built in Blender Game Engine, because we don't have the knowledge. We did this with uh, Python. 
but the, the, every line is actually a text object, so it's never, not very efficient. Um, so the mechanic, uh, the, you are this um, Meadows, you are the scientist, and any time something happens in the game, the game prompts you to write a log. When you write a log, the character, you, uh, write this story, and then this way you consume the story. Let me just forward a bit. How do you forward? Yeah. Um, shift, right, uh, to just, you know, forward a bit. Did you write? Okay, we'll use the mouse. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, damn it. Collect. So you see here, um, you control the rover with go, left, right, stop. So you go, stop, left, stop. And it's um, in some point of the game, uh, the. This is your lab. Okay, so I will just spoil the story, whatever, because it's very short. You go with this rover to find your partners, you find your partners slaughtered by some entity. Oh, no, my God. And then. Um, in that moment, this precise moment, you hear uh, uh, a metal cracking sounds in your in your hull, in your ship, or in your lab, and then the, the air, which the meter would work. Like you see, the, you hear the air leaking and the air meter going down, 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 down. So you know you're gonna die anyway. Like this alien or whatever uh, catch you, and then the only hope you have is like take pictures of the environment very quickly with the commands. That's why it's cool because it's very pressing. Um, and it's not, not as easy as uh, joystick or whatever. And then you have to collect pictures, collect logs, collect, collect analysis, pack them in a zip file, <laughs> and send them to Earth to warn them to not come to Europa, or something like this. Um, yeah, and if, yeah, this is how you find something there. I don't know, we wore this for, for class for uh, a month, or a month, month and some weeks. Um, it's actually just paused the, the, the game, and if you have interest in games or in this story or you just want to collaborate with us, uh, please just give me a poke. Thank you. So can I ask a P3D to come uh, get ready? And I get a talk. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Jason Van Gumster. Uh, about a few months ago, I started a podcast called the uh, Open Source Creative Podcast. And uh, yeah, so if you want to listen to it, it's monsterjavaguns.com, monsterjavaguns.com slash podcast. But really, that's not really why I'm talking here, mostly because I want to interview all of you. For, the, uh, for my podcast, because everybody comes to Blender for a completely different reason, and I think it's worth it to capture it. And uh, yeah, so if I haven't interviewed yet, because I've gotten a few of you, but if I haven't gotten you yet, tackle me gently, and uh, I'll interview. Just, just want to know where you are, where you're from, why you use Blender, and uh, maybe you can use that as an opportunity to promote yourself, too. Simon 
Okay, so uh, I'll jump in. Uh, I just want to drive home two points, basically. Uh, first, I'm, I'm Simon. I'm from Austria, Vienna. I'm one of two Austrian people here in the conference, I think. Or are there more? Oh, okay, two. Uh, so basically, uh, the first point is, because I've been asked, are you the photographer? So I was running around with a zoom lens, and that equals photographer. Probably, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm just making photos because I write for the uh, Austrian CG Mac. That's this one here. Um, it's basically the Austrian uh, CG community at large. Uh, we organize uh, monthly uh, meetings where we talk about the articles we write. Uh, we're also part of the like uh, interest group, computer graphics in Austria, which is like the um, based organization that holds together all the computer graphic uh, industry in Austria. Uh, there's also the Pixel conference up there on the header, that's uh, in November. Um, basically, I'm here to write an article about the conference, that's one part why I'm here. Uh, if you want to like get contacted with the CG community, so over this channel, talk to me. Um, also, because of the photos, I'm going to uh, publish those photos on Monday. I will upload all the RAWs, about 16 gigabytes, and I will drop the link into the Twitter stream, so BCon14. Uh, keep an eye open for that if you need that. Uh, I'll release it as CC0, so you can do what it, with it whatever you want. And the second point I want to drive home is... Um, I'm also organizing the uh, Viennese Blender community, which is called Viennese Blend. Uh, nothing connected with uh, coffee or anything. Uh, basically, we run uh, monthly meetings, or I run them, rather. Um, if you happen to come by Austria or um, want to or something, or want to connect to the Viennese Blend community, you can uh, hit me up later. Um, yeah, and also one more thing, uh, I just spent like one week before this conference to get a new site up because I noticed a lot of uh, user group sites were really bad and it's also like uh, the classical effort that no one wants to uh, make like making websites ultra boring um, but I uh, figured I just should take the effort and make like the best possible blender meetup uh, thing I can do it's like really super state-of-the-art web technology stack and if you can use it, if you want to use it you can so uh, just um, yeah talk to me and I will explain to you and give it a code and whatever. I will release it after the conference and yeah. Okay, that's it basically. Thanks. Is it working, HDMI? Okay. Can we put it on my computer? You have to be a mystery for a little while longer. Okay. Is there something we can do to try? I mean, I don't know why it's not working. Linux expert here in the room? Yeah, I have no idea if we if, if uh, we can solve this issue, but it's uh, the announcement is still cool. But uh, maybe we will show it later. Basically, we are uh, part of P3D in team, a uh, site where you can uh, upload stuff to the uh, 3D models to the web. Uh, but for our feature development ideas, we found that the 3D engine that we are using is limited. It didn't work? Oh, 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 yeah, no, that's not very... Internet is good. Okay. Yeah, uh, so we found that the 3D engine uh, that we are using is very limited in certain aspects. Uh, it can go, I guess, in polygon counts about a million polys or a bit more, but sculptors, for, for sculptors, that's nothing. So that, that's one problem. And then there's portability. Uh, our engine runs on the web, which is great, but it cannot be used on mobile. 
And if, if uh, some of you have tried WebGL on, I mean, directly on, on a mobile browser, it is not very good. Uh, so this guy came up with a great solution. Um, yeah, maybe I should talk. Yeah. yeah, I'm Pelle. I'm from Denmark, also part of the P3D team. Um, so basically, um, what we wanted to show, what, what we'll then tell us, is that we are working on a new version of our core viewer, um, and it's kind of in an alpha stage. One of the exciting things we are adding is um, direct support for the, the engine running in the browser to read .blend files. So you can just save a .blend, and it will pick up the changes directly. Um, and as Daniel mentioned, we are uh, moving to a more cross-platform uh, technology. Uh, so basically, we are now writing the engine in C++, which means we can run it in the browser as a desktop app in mobile. And the most exciting part, we are um, releasing this uh, as open source under the Apache 2 license, and it's already available on GitHub. So we are hoping this will make it possible to integrate to other uh, usages. For instance, um, it could be interesting maybe for the Blender Cloud. Thank you. Anyway, if you are interested in seeing it in action, if we don't get it working here, please uh, contact one of us later. We'll be happy to show it. And have a nice evening, all of you. So, 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 oh yeah. So, oops. I had one person that asked uh, not to make a presentation, but uh, he made a little video. So I'm just going to play it, and uh, that's the lightning talk. It's also a part of lightning talks. Is our Damon or Jacob still here? Yeah, or here. yeah, no talking. All right. So next one. <laughs> You're sure? You can still come after. Maybe if there's time. Okay. Um, so maybe now Ines. So hi, uh, I'm uh, Ines Almeida, and I'm here to present some of the work that I did for my thesis, which is to translate from Portuguese to Portuguese Sign Language. And the first is in text, and the other is a visual special language, and I've chosen to represent it with a 3D avatar using Blender. So I designed this system in which the first part is a uh, more about machine translation and how to uh, translate the concepts and the structure of the sentence. And then there is the more interesting part in Blender, 
uh, where you have to actually create uh, the animation to blend it together and to display it. Uh, so uh, it was a goal to make this uh, an open implementation so that others can uh, work upon it as a, a research project. And uh, I've used Blender. This is uh, my interface. I used it uh, as an add-on, so the system is all coded in Python, the natural language translation part. I'm using a panel to put the interface, and the animation runs directly in the, in the viewport. I've used uh, Rigify uh, to do this, uh, plus uh, my own system of uh, spatial marks because uh, sign language is a very complex language in which there is a special agreement uh, of uh, verbs, for instance. I can walk now or in the future, in the past, and so there is the need to define uh, all these uh, special uh, keys uh, in, in the, around the charter and in the charter itself for it to touch the nose, the ear, and this is, uh, becomes mesh dependent. How does the charter know where its nose is? We, uh, so I defined a set of uh, spots um, in the mesh. Uh, and then I have used some base uh, configurations for the hands. And I can now just say that do this configuration that is previously keyed is an action and put it uh, in this spot. And that gives me avatar uh, variability. So Blenderella there is it's like a regular human, but this one has a very big head. Uh, and it supports uh, this thing due to, the, um, to this spot definition. And finally, um, there is the actual building of the, the uterus, the sentence of, uh, of sign language. So I've used the NLA editor for this, uh, all via Python, to blend the gestures uh, into the next one and into the rest pose if the channels of the animation are not used. And then I also needed to adjust keyframes directly to adjust these ins, these outs, of, for sign spelling and all that. And I have a quick video. Can you help me get out of here, please? Yes, okay. <laughs> I tried that. No? No? Uh, <laughs> maybe here somewhere? Can I? So this is again my system. I just input a sentence there, which means John eats soup. And this is the soup. This is a spell finger of the John, and then he eats it. Uh, my name is Sibun. I'm a PhD candidate at the Utrecht University. And my subject is the perception, well, my, for this talk, my subject is the perception of collisions between virtual characters. Um, my PhD study itself, I'm looking at the animation of virtual characters in dense crowds. And with dense, I mean really dense, more or less like you're sitting there, um, you're in a busy bar or in a, in a filled up bus, and there you, you, the simulation cannot do collision avoidance anymore. It's always colliding, so you have to do efficient collision detection and then handle that. Um, so we're looking at crowds like this or even denser. And to do this collision detection, uh, we created a system with bounding cylinder hierarchies. So rather than representing a single character with one cylinder, which is common in crowd simulation, we use the hierarchy. So this is the top view, and from that we would create 
a hierarchy like this, which consists of increasingly smaller cylinders. But it's, it's fast, but it's an approximation. Um, I'm not going to tell you all the details. This is just a pretty picture made, I made in Blender. Um, the question now for us, oh, there you have the picture again. Uh, the question now for us is how precise do we need to be? What can you actually see when you're observing virtual characters on your computer screen? Because if you can't see a collision anyway, we don't need to detect it. So we started by investigating using static images, and we had various parameters on how we could re describe such uh, a situation. Um, we created about a thousand of these images by random, and all that in Python, all of them automatically generated and rendered. And then the paper got rejected. Uh, because we were doing things with static images, drawing conclusions, and then applying them to moving characters, and the reviewer said, well, you can't do that. So now we're actually doing, repeating that same, um, same user study again, but then with moving video. So this is just an example video of our user study. And to give you a demonstration, this is what we can also do. So in this case, the characters are walking right through each other. And by using a Boolean modifier, we could actually visualize all this. We also use it to calculate the actual volume of the intersection. Um, so my question to you is, please participate in our user study. There are 32 videos of two and a half seconds each. So it's, it should take about five or 10 minutes. Um, but please do so on a, on a laptop screen, something suitably large, because it's all about what you can and cannot perceive, and on a small mobile, you, you don't see anything. Um, so these are my cats. They also think that you should join in. That's it. Sorry, I have a cold. I have to blow my nose. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. Um, just full screen. <laughs> Ah, oh, perfect. So, um, I've been working one and a half years on a architecture visualization. Um, it's about this hotel village. Uh, it's one and a half years because I have started already in an earlier part of the project because it wasn't clear how they wanted exactly to have the, the hotel village and needed a rough model at the beginning, at the very beginning, before even an architect was in the project. Yeah, that's the reason why it took so extremely long. And yeah, this is the, the ready animation they already used for seeking investors and for getting a license to build it. Um, render time of one frame is, by the way, one and a half hours because I made the mistake that I've used transparent planes for the grass. And yeah, but at that time, particles were still not implemented in Blender, so. <laughs> um, by the way, fun fact, uh, this is uh, where the skiers are coming down the, the hill. This is a bridge for the skiers. And it was uh, roughly built like I've been drawing it Blender because they considered it for be good, like a busier shape. So Blender's everywhere, kind of. And just quickly, one thing I wanted to show you, technically, uh, out of Blender, um, the, the background, probably you would be wondering how it's done because it's, I mean, I think, quite photorealistic and quite, yeah. Um, just open it quickly in Blender.
Ah, yeah, okay. Um, this is a, a, a terrain model. Ask me later how, uh, how we got it. And it's just we've made aerial photographs, which are looking like kind of, for example, this one. Yeah. And just projection mapped it on the, the terrain. So really straightforward workflow. And really looks in the end like this. It just has a disadvantage that uh, you can only watch it from one point. And as if you go away, it just starts looking like these strange lines here because it's really from one point projected there. It's why can, you can't really use it for games or something like that and it's gets, getting misty back there. But yeah, that's the way we do it. Just don't, it's not the Barbie bird on the left, uh, on the right, so yeah. Thanks. Hi everybody, I'm Valerio, I'm Italian, I work for um, um, Protocub, is a 3D printing factory uh, in Turin, and uh, this is my uh, little project. Uh, my customer asked me to um, start from uh, some concept. Uh, okay. Some beautiful concept like this. Uh, perfect concept. Uh, is, uh, I can slide. No. <laughs> you just press the space, and then you, and then Ooh, you can. Uh, simple. <laughs> Okay, uh, five concepts, uh, the character uh, of uh, Marvel Avengers, and uh, um, the, um, the most difficult uh, of this project is um, model this for uh, an uh, NARP surface. Uh, I'm, the, I'm not a, a, an ARPS uh, so, uh, modeler, and I uh, make this with uh, this spline. This spline is, uh, is very similar to um, poly, uh, poly subdivision modeling, and uh, I try to, uh, to make this uh, with a, a software uh, of uh, subdivision like Blender. And um, oh, I can uh, open one of these. Mm -hmm. yeah. Double click. Oh. Oh. Maybe use the mouse. Oh, mouse, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is uh, the, the result. Uh, oh. oh, okay. Um, this plane uh, convert uh, um, oh, my vertex in a... Um, in control point of, uh, of the NARPS and uh, is, uh, is similar to uh, subdivision surface. Okay. And um, when I, um, oh, sorry, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm Anna Fabrizio, <laughs> please. <laughs> and, uh, the difficult modeling of this uh, shape is the avoid the uh, undercuts and uh, um, and the little small uh, uh, detail. Uh, okay, boom, well, stop. Okay. <laughs> Question? <laughs> time last, time last is beautiful. Okay. 
This is simple uh, subdivision modeling in Blender. I make a little uh, setup for rendering for control the, the workflow. Okay, ah, okay, sorry. This is a little uh, USB key. <laughs> and uh, in the end, I... Um, uh, where is the print? Okay. Open space. Space open. Okay. Once. Okay. This is my uh, character uh, printed with the uh, uh, Z Corp uh, printer. Um, don't slide. No, because you double space or something. Magic. Okay. Once. Okay. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>
Uh, okay, hello everybody. I'm here on a little bit of a whim. Um, uh, I thought I would just quickly uh, show this. About a year and a half ago, um, I got asked to do um, a shot on a film. Um, let's do... There we go. So... Um, So this film, uh, directed by uh, Albert Pyun, um, should be coming out, I think, fairly soon. And I got asked to just do um, a very short 10-second uh, clip for it. Um, now, I hadn't really planned on presenting, um, so I haven't really got a whole lot to show you, apart from the, the very short 10 seconds. Um, so I'll just quickly um, show you that. So this is just the only, the only thing I had to... Uh, to go on with this was basically I had three weeks to do it and it had to be rendered in Blender internal. So pretty much everything, oops. <laughs> you can keep talking. By right, the way. So, um, so this is just the, the output straight out of the, out of the render engine. Um, so it needs, um, it's, it still has to go to uh, the compositor to um, get everything out. So there's lots of passes. Uh, and essentially the city was split into three sections. There was a back section, the middle section, and the sort of front section. And then there was lots of passes put out for them. Um, obviously, I haven't seen the final thing yet because the movie isn't, uh, isn't out yet. But um, so obviously there'd be like heat haze and stuff on those engines. Um, so um, yeah, just wanted to sort of, you know, uh, sure, you're and hopefully uh, you'll get to see it fairly soon. Lightning talk. So, yeah, you have your stuff. You know how to use a Mac. Nope, but I try to. You've seen how it's working? <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Zacharias uh, Reinhardt from Germany. You're a tall guy. Oh, sorry. Uh, together with my brother, I have a film and 3D company called Agensas Brothers. Um, we uh, do blender training. And uh, basically, we always wanted to do a big movie, and uh, we don't want to wait several years, so we just started this year, and the movie is called... Web 2.108. Um, uh, let's get to the browser. Come on. Yes. Just open the tab. Okay. So it's a 3D animated movie. We use mainly Blender for the 3D work. Um, Basically, our goals we see down here. The movie will be freely available um, a year after it will be finished. We mainly use Blender. It will be a 3D animated short movie. Um, the production is uh, quite open, so if we scroll down here, you see quite a lot of blog posts. We document our production. And we uh, work together with an international team. Um, I'm from Germany, and it's the first project we work with uh, international team. And I'm showing you this project because you can support the production. Um, first, you visit this website and maybe click on About and Status. You see what kind of movie it is. Um, on the Status, you will see um, what uh, the production phases are. Um, when they maybe will be done. So we are in the pre-production right now. We are working on the screenplay. Uh, we have hired a concept artist for one month now. He has done a lot of great work. Um, I can show you shortly. So. Um. You have to switch, you just press the space. Okay. Could, could you open all of it? To slide just okay. Just down. 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 okay, here just some um, random images. Uh, I don't talk too much about it. This is our main character. Uh, it maybe sees um, that it's an uh, action movie, but it is not. It will be a science fiction 
äh, Drama, Deep Story, so äh, <laughs> here just one some random images uh, on the website you can uh, read about these images what uh, what it means what it has to be and so on so I can switch how can I open this proposal I should open again uh, maybe you put it down here and Okay, uh, you can read a little bit about the story. Um, we will release more about the story soon, um, and you can become a sponsor. If you uh, like the project and you want to support it, we have some sponsor slots you can buy, and certainly you get rewards for it. Um, you can see them right here, and up here we have a description of all the rewards you will get. And you can see 30 people have already uh, sponsored some little amount, 1,600 euros. That's quite much because I think this project is not uh, quite popular right now. So if you like it, uh, check out the website and if you want, support us. Thanks. <laughs>
so it was a 2D interactive map with Blender. Okay, the interactivity for the moment is not that good. Keep talking. Okay. So we did that uh, for a uh, non-profit organization uh, that is making some teaching to the children and they wanted some pedagogical material. Uh, so I, I proposed them to, to make a 3D map uh, on which we can project uh, uh, video and they wanted to project water too and it's working because they are working uh, about the, the water, uh, where goes the water uh, if it fall on one side of the mountain or the other side. In French, we call it bassin versant, I don't know here, in English. Uh, so in France, half of France goes to Atlantic and the other half, okay, or the other third goes to Mediterranean. So, uh, so uh, okay, let me show you. Uh, basically, the workflow, we use the uh, 3D point include from the National Geographic Institute of France that now is free. It's not really uh, open source license, but it's, you can use it. Uh, import it to Blender, change it to a mesh with a point cloud skinner that is uh, working very well. A little bit of cleaning. Okay, let's see the picture. This is the point cloud. I don't know if you see things, so it's millions of points. After point cloud skinner, you get the, the 3D mesh. And really, I had, uh, let's say, 20 uh, faces to, to clean. So the point cloud skinner I done was working very, very well with that. So this is Blender Cam, and in Blender Cam, uh, it calculates the uh, CNC router um, well, um, way, okay, in two paces, one with a rough router, because if not, it's very long, and one with a small one. So it's only, I, I have the Blender files, but I think we have no time. Uh, I have a video of this, I will show you later. So this is the results. Uh, we did two of them. It's 80 centimeters by, uh, by 80 centimeters. So it's the actual uh, mountains uh, with the Z-axis uh, exaggerated so that you can feel it. And then the next step is that we project uh, that um, anything you want on it. And uh, you have, uh, as the projector is uh, widescreen, uh, we, are, we have the left and right parts where you can project uh, informations on things. Uh, I even use Blender to model the, the scale, 3D printed, because it's not uh, uh, easy to understand scale. Um, and, uh, okay, it's available with children too. Uh, so the aim is that, okay, they go around and they interact with the map, but they still feel the 3D uh, part of it. Uh, and I will show you the video if I manage to use this strange computer. Uh, so I think it should be this. I've understood that. Never use quick time. This is <laughs> so this is the finishing pass. You see on the right part, uh, it's the result of the rough pass. And this is the finishing pass. Uh, it's, we use uh, Shapioko, which is an open source, open software uh, CNC milling machine, router. And you can see all the uh, small parts, and then it will come out. I think the sound is not very interesting. But... Okay, so this is the, the map. You see the difference, the rough part with the very big tool on the finishing one. Okay, and let's jump because everybody wants to eat. Let's jump to the, uh, I think this one. So it's very not easy at all to film this thing because you have the light of the projector that is very strong. Okay, this was small advertising for my Fab Lab. And so this is the, the result with the projection on it. So the, the, the trickiest part was to cut uh, maps, really uh, images at the right uh, size of the 3D model. This was, I didn't find an automatic workflow for that, so it was just by hand and very ugly. Uh, and so you can project uh, a, a real view too. And this is, for the moment, the interactivity is a very ugly uh, click on the things. Uh, the next step is uh, we will have a cheap version for poor people for 15 euros with Arduino on the light uh, sensors. So you put your hand on the make a shadow so the light sensor feeds it and, uh, and uh, will make a, a, 
expensive one with a Kinect sensor. Uh, if somebody here can help me with Nimate, that I found. Uh, so it's for that it's not ready yet. So thank you very much. Uh, and you see here the projection of the things. When you click in on a part, you have the picture of the part and the things like that. And, uh, and the children can interact with the map. And if they take a glass of water and pour it on it, they see where the water flows. So it's funny, but very dirty. So I don't have a movie of that because I didn't want them to spoil everything around. So that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Campbell, can you come to talk? Uh, you're here. Uh, this is. Uh, impromptu and not a lightning talk, but I've noticed a lot of people are using add-ons for crazy stuff. I didn't think they were using them before. Um, the Python API is maintained by, I think, maybe a quarter of a person. It's like me and Bastian and there's maybe a few other people, but really not many people do work on the Python API. Ah, there you are. Okay. You can, where? Yeah. So, um, we can't promise that we can add all sorts of crazy stuff that you want, but I've noticed that when I do add things and change them and break them, people complain. So people do use the stuff we add to the Python API. So if you are doing something interesting, like a lot of the projects here, and you have problems or you notice things that need to be added, I can't promise that we will, but let us know on the BF Python mailing list, uh, maybe pain points, things that you've noticed. Just while I've been here talking to people, I've noticed things that are slow, things that I need to fix when I get back. So uh, I'd really like to help out people, make people in the Python community feel supported, and uh, make sure that really crazy cool add-ons like you guys have been doing uh, continue to, to be possible. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, hello, okay, fine. First, uh, hello, my name is uh, Tristan Salzmann, and I'm from Germany and a freelancer. In I mainly use Blender for my work, but also some stuff like Maya or things like this. And um, yeah, I uh, tried out a little Maya and a little Blender, and I compared, and I found out that ah, there's something in Blender I miss that's available in Maya, and that's the muscle system. Perhaps you are uh, familiar with this. This is the um, option to deform your character with uh, meshes, so with muscles, for example, um, because you can imagine your body is not only work with bones, uh, it also is deformed by certain muscles. And uh, for this case, I uh, made a little add-on. It's called Blender Muscle Tools. It's uh, right now available on uh, the Blender market. If I get this right here, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, yeah. No? Yeah. OK. <laughs> here you can see it. Um, uh, OK. And yeah, I want to show you a quick presentation here with this stuff. Oops, here you have um, uh, perhaps uh, just some kind of mesh I created. For example, this bone here. Um, yeah, this, uh, uh, <laughs> no, this uh, muscle here, for example. And uh, this option allows you to uh, create uh, this muscle to a uh, at this uh, mesh here to a muscle. And uh, everything you have to do is read that the group name, and now you are fine. Then you have to rename this muscle. For example, let's call this one here muscle. Oh, muscle, yes. Then you can, uh, as I said, th this is just only a mesh. You can take everything for this. Then you can convert it into some kind of a muscle. And as you can see, uh, as you can see, it uh, works, it deforms, just like a muscle would automatically do. Uh, but this is not everything. You can, after you converted this muscle, uh, choose some options here. For example, the resolution. You can adjust uh, the render resolution, of course. I'm pretty sure you know what this means. Then the base length. This is a, a static length uh, or a custom length that defines where the muscle starts, yeah, as you can see. Then uh, also uh, some kind of volume, how big this muscle gets if it's uh, stretched. 
Yeah, then some uh, very nice jiggle options. If I press Alt A and play this back, you can see that this muscle jiggles also. You can, yeah, do some fa fancy stuff like this. But the most important uh, thing is that you can bind this muscle to uh, your skin or to some, uh, yeah, some kind of skin. I prepared a little. Uh, Example here. So let's just select both of these. Uh, perhaps you noticed that there was a group created. Uh, why isn't this full screen? Oh, yeah, you can see that there's a group created which is exactly called like you call, like you call the muscle. For example, in this case, it's muscle. Then you can uh, fit this muscle here, for example. Wait a minute, so, uh, let's see what's wrong. Ah, okay, selection is with the left mouse button. Uh, no, it isn't. Ah, what's wrong here? Something weird happens. Okay, okay perhaps can you, uh, can you uh, fit this screen completely to one? What, this is stretched or something like this. I, I think it's the resolution of the... Um, ah, yeah, you can also do it. Yeah. Uh, here, full screen, for example? No, 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 no. no. You mean... No. Uh, 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 oops. I don't... No, 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 here. Uh, oh, you mean uh, of Blender? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> okay, do what you want to do. No, because we cannot change the resolution. Okay, it's, yes, no, that, that's just, fine. Uh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no problem. Yeah, just show you the video. Okay, I will show you the video. <laughs> this is uh, pretty more easy. No. Oh, yes. Okay. Wait a second. So, yeah, this shot make some stuff easier. I think in the past you needed a degree. <laughs> there is no correlation between you. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go. All steps are declared in this black... Uh, Some jiggle options. You can watch the video online. Yeah. If someone wants to talk, uh, I mean, uh, for me it's over. It's finished. We don't have. But if someone wants to still say something, announce like no video, nothing, but just say. Uh, 
come to see me. But thank you. Did I say it's finished? Thank you. Uh, you can see the result. <laughs> okay. And now the Susan Awards. Um.